music markers right ahead on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. It's our mug of the month, our poster of the month. It's the last day of the month, and it's also a large poster. These are the coolest. If you haven't gotten one yet, make sure you do. This is the small one. There's one that's two foot by three foot as well. Death is dead. And Hayden did a great job on this one. Really great job. And what are we drinking in that mug? Oh, if I can lift it. I know. It's our new two pound ground. Two pound ground. That ought to be a song. But anyway, it's our coffee reimagined. You know, we were doing 10 ounce and it just got too expensive. It, I don't feel good about charging so much. So we were able to get a much better deal on two pounds, our same coffee. And, uh, and then the postage is exactly the same. So we can charge double what we were charging for 10 ounces and get 32 ounces. It's a deal. We also have our new cacao, holy cacao. And it's our newest blend with cacao beans from the Amazon rainforest. And you can get all of that, plus our mugs. Again, this is a great mug. Death is dead. We are metal, we are family. Dot com. Dear Pastor Bob, people talk about being careful what music you listen to. They, sh they say you should be careful on the type of music and the content. I listen to both Christian and secular music. I have my favorites in both. Some of my favorites are not Christian and definitely not godly, but I don't let it affect me. What is your opinion? There's so much to say about this one, and I have opinions and fairly strong ones. Let's break it down. <clears throat> I think all of us listen to music, but music becomes our markers. Let me explain that. I can listen to a song, and it'll take me right back to when I first heard it, or a specific time that I was listening to it. There are times, and I've told you before, when I can remember what I was wearing even. Well, I can remember everything about that song. Something, an event, something that related to it, whatever. And, you know, I've told you that I love to listen to the Beatles. You know, I grew up during that era. And although I like so many different styles of music, still one of my favorite bands. And when I listen to Beatles songs, it takes me right back to all the things that I was doing during those times. Classic rock does that to me as well. And of course, there are the hymns of the faith, the hymns, man. I remember so many details about being in church, about playing piano for the church, about, you know, times that I heard those hymns, who, Who's, um, you know, whose favorites they were, all of those things. There are markers that come along with the music. And so we realize that it isn't just a mental choice, it's a choice from the heart because we connect with music. It becomes something that becomes part of our lives. So we have a lot of memories involved and, and I think it's important that we understand that we have to be careful about what those memories might be. Now, I've made decisions about certain bands when I realized that the content of the music isn't exactly what I want to remember or what I want to put into my heart or my spirit. I avoid it, and I've avoided many bands that way some very popular bands. I just didn't feel like it was right for me. 
But you know, some people might say, but you listen to the Beatles, they're not Christian. And uh, you know, someone sent me a, a, a video to watch on YouTube about all the problems with the Beatles. And, and, and I get that. I, and I've watched those YouTubes on Striper. I've watched them on Petra. I, I've, I've watched them about me trying to prove that I'm satanic and a false prophet. I think we can do hit pieces on just about anything. We really can. But I think doing a hit piece on something doesn't necessarily capture the spirit of the music. I'm not defending the Beatles, by the way. I think that there are some songs that I'm not fond of and they're not in my playlist. For the most part, I think they were brilliant. They talk about life in a positive way. We don't seem to do that anymore. But they're markers, they're memory markers. They're, they're a stroll down memory lane for us as we get older. And then this person says, I listen to both Christian and secular music. I have my favorites in both and I do too. Some of my favorites are not Christian and definitely not godly, but I don't let it affect me. Uh, good luck with that. You know, when you study how our mind works, corporations spend millions of dollars playing their jingle to you. You recognize the song, you recognize the, the hook line, and if that didn't work, they wouldn't invest in it. Seriously. They know that you'll remember that hook, that jingle, and you'll internalize it. It'll become part of your process and it'll affect you in such a way that hopefully you'll purchase their product. Well, that's pretty powerful. If it can motivate you to do that, what can music motivate you to do? To just say, well, I don't let it affect me. It always affects you. It isn't a matter of will it affect me or not. It's a matter of how will it affect me. And what do I want to direct that to? Now, music is a great motivator. It's a great mood enhancer. It's, it's great for life foundations. I, I equate so many milestones and markers in my life with music, as I said. So I think it's something we have to give some thought to and we have to be careful with. Because if you're like me, in any situation, sometimes just a, 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 a few words that somebody says will spark a song with the same words. People used to play that game with me. They'd give me a word or two and say, think of a song with that word. And I always can, because <laughs> they're in my head. Well, let's look at Philippians chapter four. Flip over to Philippians chapter four, verse eight. And it's a scripture we've gone through before, but I want you to be familiar with it. Finally, believers, whatever is true, whatever is or is honorable, I almost, I almost said horrible. That wouldn't have been right. Whatever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things. Center your mind on them. Implant them in your heart. In other words, do pay attention to what comes in, how it affects you. Am I saying that all secular music will affect you in a negative way? No, I don't believe that. I think some definitely would. And then there are some songs too to bring difficult memories. When I listen to them, I remember things I'd rather not remember and I can't listen to them. Nothing wrong with the song. It's the memory attached. You may be one of those too. So folks, it's something to consider. Your music is a big part of you. You hide it not only in your head, but in your heart, whether you realize it or not. And it's a powerful, powerful motivator. Well, folks, don't forget, you are blessed. So go and be a blessing.